Welcome to the third session of Physics Talk 2021. Uh, I will start by introducing myself. I'm Zubaida Karim Juthi, a third year student in physics discipline uh, at Khulna University. I would like to point out that today is a very special day. It's Pi Day actually, so happy Pi Day everyone. And it's also, also a significant day in the history of physics. Uh, it's Albert Einstein's birthday. So in this very special day, uh, I, it's my great pleasure to introduce our speaker today. He is Abdus Sami Akondo. Uh, he is currently working as a full-time research assistant in the Department of Physics, Kulna University. Uh, he will be giving the talk on his recent research topic. His topic is nonlinear dynamics uh, of magnetization, reversal, and shape and isotropy. Uh, so Sami, you can start your talk. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the nice introduction, Juthi. Uh, uh, first, I would like to apologize for my uh, bad English pronunciation. Uh, also, please uh, let me know if you uh, face a uh, problem hearing me. Uh, also, I'm a bit nervous because my uh, teachers and my super, uh, supervisor is also here. So, but overall, I'm hoping this will be a good presentation. Okay. So uh, the, the title of my talk is LLG Equation, Nonlinear Dynamics of Magnetization Reversal and Shape Anisotropy. So uh, uh, first I would like to introduce to our research group. Uh, I'm working under the supervision of Dr. Mohamed Torikul Islam and we have uh, two co uh, collaborators from Hong Kong, Professor Xian Chu Wang and Professor Xiang Gorg Wang. And we have uh, our colleagues, Mohamed uh, Abul Jafar Pikul, Sharia Sharmin, uh, J.M. Tofik Islam, who are uh, actually working uh, for their thesis, actually. And uh, then there is me and also Zubay Dekarim Zuthi. Okay, so this is the outline of my talk. Um, first, I will be talking about the landau lipschitz -Gilbert, gilbert equation or the LLG equation. Then I'll talk a little bit about the nonlinear dynamics of magnetization reversal. Uh, then I'll uh, talk about shape and isotropy. Then I'll uh, talk about previous researches that were done on uh, related to these topics. Then I'll uh, present my research findings. Uh, then I'll uh, uh, give you my conclusion of my research. Okay, so the landau lipschitz gilbert equation is a phenomenological equation. So what is a phenomenological equation? Uh, a phenomenological equation is a uh, equation that we observe a phenomena in, uh, in the real world, then we, uh, uh, we use an equation to describe that uh, phenomena. Like F is equal to MA, uh, MA. Uh, so we uh, see an object, uh, we uh, put force on an object, it accelerates. So uh, then we, uh, we have the equation F is equal to MA, which is a phenomenological equation. But E is equal to MC square is not a phenomenological equation because uh, that equation was derived from other equations. Okay. so. This equation is a phenomenological equation. And so as it is a phenomenological equation, it has uh, some benefits actually. Uh, we can uh, modify this equation to meet our required needs or system. So uh, there are uh, many system like uh, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, make the equation uh, to work for magnetic fields or microwave, uh, which is actually our field. Uh, we use microwave in our research. Uh, then there is spin orbit torque, uh, spin transfer torque, uh, thermal gradient, domain wall, and there is magnons, skyrmion, and many more. So uh, the landau lipschitz gilbert equation actually start like this. Uh, it's m cross h equal to d uh, del, uh, partially, de partially derivative with respect to time of the magnetization. So what it says is that uh, we, if we have a magnetization and uh, we put a field, which is H uh, at some angle with it, and it will act up. Uh, the field width, the field will uh, induce some torque on the magnetization. So uh, it, what will happen that the magnetization will start to uh, rotate around that field. Uh, and I have prepared a demonstration for this. So uh, the final equation is that the uh, uh, Gilbert actually uh, published a paper in 2004, uh, giving this equation, which is actually the uh, LLG equation. So what is this term? Okay, so this is the actually the same term as here. And what he did is he introduced a damping term. So uh, what is uh, so what is this? So in the real world, what happens that if if we put a field in a magnetization, the magnetization will start to uh, uh, rotate around that 
field but uh, that's that's not that's not going to happen uh, like uh, forever so uh, in the real world there are damping and there are other factors so there will be a natural damping that the magnetization will try to be aligned along the field so what this term is doing that it's actually introducing that idea so uh, we have two uh, coefficient here this is the gyromagnetic ratio and here alpha is the gilbert damping coefficient I prepared a demonstration to uh, uh, actually uh, physically understand the, what this uh, actually means. So uh, let's go there. Okay, so uh, here we can see that, okay, so what this arrow means is the uh, is our field, external field, and this is our micro uh, magnetization. So I have, uh, I have put them in an angle. So what is, uh, so I have put the, uh, field along the z-axis, uh, there is a good reason for that. And the field is constant. So this is our h, what we, uh, what we uh, talked about in the equation. And this is our m. So uh, what, what's gonna happen there is that it, there it will be a torque term. So the torque will be like this. Okay, so if we are familiar with the right-hand rule, uh, the, there is a, uh, vector, there is another vector, then there will be a, a torque along this. So this is our torque and this torque, uh, so this is a free vector, right? So we can move around the vector uh, as we like. So we can think of this vector uh, like it is working on this, uh, on the top of the magnetization. So we can think it like this one. Okay, so it's actually working along the tangent of the, uh, of a, let's say, uh, circle. So we have a circle like this. So these are, uh, the torque is actually working along the tangent. So, uh, so if there is torque, that the torque will force the magnetization to move. So if we play this, then we'll see that the magnetization is rotating around the field, but that's not physical because there are damping terms that, uh, that will try to align the magnetization along the field. So uh, we know that already that <coughs> There, is, there was a second term that uh, M cross uh, del M by del T. So what's what the del M by del T? This is our del M by del T, right? And this is our actual M. So we will get it, uh, another torque like uh, this one. Okay, so let's, yeah. <clears throat> so, we will get a torque like this one. So the minus sign actually, the actual torque is like if, if we are uh, if, if we use the right hand rule, the torque will be like this is actually the torque that uh, comes from the m cross del m by del t. But we had a minus sign, right? So the minus sign will rotate it one eighty degree. So the final is this uh, torque, and we have two torques here now, uh, which was uh, along the uh, tangent and some torque that is uh, acting towards the field. So this is actually the term that, uh, that, are, uh, that are introducing the damping. So we will get a uh, actually resultant torque, which is this. So we can get rid of this one and that one, that two. Okay, so finally we have uh, this one, right? So now if we play the, animation, we'll see that the magnetization is, uh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So this torque is uh, forcing the magnetization to be aligned along the field. So what, what, what's the idea here that we can actually manipulate magnetization with using external fields. So, uh, okay, so let's get back to our slide. <clears throat> So we are trying to manipulate magnetization and the dynamics of that mag magnetization is not actually linear. So uh, that's because it's too complex to consider. It's like, we don't understand it fully yet. And there is too many effects and fields that we have to consider. So in 2006, uh, Professor X Wang actually published a paper where he determined the theoretical limit that uh, he just considered, okay, so if we uh, apply external force uh, or a field uh, on a magnetization, the magnetization will be like, uh, uh, will uh, align itself uh, or reverse itself along these paths 
or any other path, which is not linear. But what he did that he considered that there is no other, uh, like the, the, the magnetization just didn't move any, uh, any, any other way or non-linear way. He just went like this from this. So this is the least, uh, this is the least path that it can take to reverse itself. So uh, he actually did determine the theoretical time, which is the uh, actually the uh, theoretical limit to uh, reverse a magnetic particle. Okay, so shape anisotropy. So shape anisotropy is also called demagnetizing field. And uh, uh, we might be familiar with this uh, idea of demagnetizing field from if we, if we have studied uh, electrodynamics. And the field actually arises from the deformation of the shape. And shape anisotropy is helpful for magnetization reversal because uh, we we know that we are we're saying that it is a demagnetizing field. So it actually uh, uh, demagnetizes, like it actually uh, works opposite to the to our anisotropy, uh, which is natural anisotropy. So we we'll, I will be talking about that later. So that what uh, this shape anisotropy does that it reduces our resonant frequency. Now, the resonant frequency is actually given by that equation and it was uh, pub, uh, published in uh, 1996 by J. Dubnik. And this, uh, what this term is, HK is our anisotropy. So anisotropy is uh, the, uh, the field that internally uh, exists in our in the material inside the material, and we know about gamma, which is uh, gyromagnetic ratio, and F naught is given by this equation. So uh, what the de demagnetizing field does, it actually uh, uh, works opposite that field. So it actually reduces that HK. So reducing HK means reducing uh, re frequency. So what this frequency does, uh, so uh, less frequency means that we can imply it in uh, practical application. So higher frequency is uh, harder to uh, realize in practice. Okay, so uh, so I have also prepared a shape uh, a demonstration for shape anisotropy. So let's go back to that slide. Okay, so uh, I hope this is visible. So let's say we have a uh, unixial uniaxial particle. So what is uniaxial particle that we have a uh, particle that is like a cube. So it has a, like, uh, it has the same length, width and the uh, height. So this is an uniaxial particle and this is a magnet, magnetic particle because we're working with magnetization. So it, it will have a magnetization. So I have a magnetization inside that particle like this one. Okay, so what anisotropy is that uh, it doesn't, it, it has a uniaxial shape. So there is a internal anisotropy field, which is forcing the magnetization to be like this one. And actually uh, what happens that the magnetization can either be up or down, like, uh, so we can just uh, rotate this one, like this one. So it can be up or down. So this is the uh, intrinsic, anisotropy actually the uh, of the material now what uh, okay so we talked about shape anisotropy so we're, what we are going to do here that we will uh, uh, deform the shape of that particle so it is it's now uh, uniaxial so what we are going to do we are going to we will we are going to make it biaxial okay so what we are going to do is we are going to like uh, put pressure on the uh, Z axis, so it will be deformed along the Z axis. So we're going to uh, deform it uh, along the Z axis. Okay, so let's say like this. Okay, so now it's deformed, but its uh, length and width are same, but the height is different now. Okay, so now that the now that the shape is deformed, the magnetization is like sticking out of the particle. That's not uh, that cannot happen, right? So what will happen that the magnetization will be tilted, okay? So what, okay, so this is tilted, right? So this tilt is actually happening, it's actually happening because we are, deform we are deforming the shape. And this shape deform, actually what happened there is that uh, there is a, another force or uh, another field actually, uh, uh, acting opposite to the 
uh, our uh, intrinsic anisotropy. So we had uh, like this one uh, perfectly, uh, perfectly unixial shape. Now it, there is another field which is shape anisotropy, forcing the uh, uh, magnetization to be tilted, and the total magnet uh, there is a to the total field is decreased. Right. So that's what actually that that is uh, that's what the shape anisotropy does. It actually reduces the anisotropy of the of our particle, and we actually use that idea. <clears throat> okay. So let's get back to our slides. Okay. So uh, in previous researches, there were like uh, uh, we have seen that we can use uh, constant magnetic field to align the magnet magnetization along that field. So in previous research, uh, there were like they tried using microwave field. So the microwave field is like a, a plane polarized or there is linearly polarized. So what they did was they used linear down chirp pulse. So they use they changed the mag microwave of the uh, field. Uh, the frequency of the field linearly. But what they did was they only used positive frequencies. Okay, and they used uniaxial shape and they only considered single domain. So we can see here that the microwave is plane polarized, right? So the microwave is rotating like this one plane and the magnetization is uh, reversed. Now, what? so what do we see here? That the magnetization is, uh, the microwave is decreasing and when it's, and it stops when it the uh, it becomes zero, right? And the, there is no movement. Then the frequency is zero. Then it stops. And what's what is happening to the magnetization? That it is actually reversing itself, and it's taking a lot of time because it is happening because of the natural damping of the material, which uh, we talked about, uh, and we termed it as Gilbert damping, right? And this is actually taking a lot of time. This is uh, and they're actually done for thirty seconds. Uh, actually, this is not 30 seconds because uh, it's actually in nano uh, second scale, uh, but we uh, uh, actually reduced the frame rate because uh, because we cannot actually understand if we see it in nano scale, uh, nano part, uh, nano second scale. Okay, so <clears throat> then in uh, 2008, uh, my supervisor actually published a paper in during his PhD where he used linear down, down chirp, but what he did that he actually uh, changed the frequency from positive to negative. So he actually didn't stop uh, to zero. He actually changed the direction of the uh, uh, microwave. So this is the equation. This is actually a linear equation, as you can see. So this, that is why it is a linear down chart. And what happened there that it actually roughly match, uh, matched with the magnetization dy dynamics. And he also used a axial shape and he also considered single domain. So this is actually our uh, visualization. The microwave is changing. Okay, let's start again. The microwave is decreasing, decreasing, and it's matching with the magnetization, if we if we see there. And we can see actually there, there is a mismatch. Uh, yeah, right there, there's a mismatch among the microwave and the magnetization. So what what's the physics there is that the resonant frequency, we are actually trying to match the uh, frequency of the magnetization. And when we're using that resonant frequency, we fr used from that uh, equation. And when we match that resonant frequency, what actually does, it actually stimulates, uh, induces stimulated energy absorption and emission. So when it's, it's actually reducing from positive to zero, it is a, the magnet microwave actually giving the magnetization energy to reverse. To, uh, to be like zero, like uh, it was like this and to, uh, it, it absorbs energy and like be like this. And what happens then that the microwave actually starts uh, uh, rotating uh, in the opposite direction. So uh, that actually what it does that it, it, it actually takes the energy from the magnetization away. So it actually, uh, so we have seen in the previous slide that it actually takes a longer time to uh, reverse itself. But when we're taking the energy of that magnetization away, it actually reverses itself faster. Okay, so uh, now I'll be uh, going into uh, my research. So there are my models and parameters. We are actually using the ma uh, material parmalloy, which is actually an alloy, a mixture of nickel, which is 80% and iron, 20%. 
then the, the saturation magnetization of our particle is 10 to the power 6 ampere per meter. Then EZX is anisotropy, which is actually we are talking about that, the anisotropy, intrinsic anisotropy, which is uh, 0.75 Tesla. And to understand that wh how much uh, uh, strong field that is, we can think that the uh, field of our gravitational, uh, okay, so the field of our gravitational force is actually approximately around 0 0.45 Tesla. So it's actually larger than that. But it, it has actually a, a low radius of uh, action, or we can say field. So the gyromagnetic ratio is 1.75 into 10 to the power 11 radius uh, radian per Tesla per second. Then the exchange stiffness is 13 into 10 to the power minus 12 joule per meter. And the Gilbert damping we have used in our research that alpha is equal to 0 0.01. Okay, so in my research, what we've seen that the linear down chirp actually, uh, there was a mismatch. So we, we tried using nonlinear down chirp pulse. And what we, what, we saw, what we saw that the dynamics of the magnetization actually matches closely with our nonlinear down chirp pulse. And we have used biaxial shape because we, have, uh, we, we wanted to harness the idea of shape anisotropy. And we have discretized the single domain uh, into uh, multiple. Uh, so we actually dis uh, discretized the single domain. Actually, so this is actually our profile. Uh, that's how we change the frequency from positive to negative. So uh, it actually. <clears throat> uh, so this is the equation of our frequency. So there is a term that that's actually introduced. So if we think about that, uh, the frequency is changing like cos. So what will it will do that it will go down like this and it will start rising from there. But there is a, there, there, that term is actually time dependent. So it actually increases with time. So it actually uh, increases the frequencies. But what we are interested in that how uh, uh, that the frequency is actually going from positive to negative. So we actually uh, change like this and we stop the field right there. But we, uh, but for convenience, we are uh, showing that extra part. Okay, so now the visualization. So micro field actually matching perfectly, almost closely matching with the magnetization. So right there, it changes. The magnetization changes. So what we've seen that it's actually better than linear down chirp. So it actually matching the non-linear dynamics of the magnetization closely. And it's actually uh, inducing better uh, stimulated absorption and emission, energy emission uh, than linear down chirp. So what we found that linear down chirp is better than linear down chirp. So this is the uh, magnetization that we can see the red one is the non-linear down chirp, which is faster than the, uh, so this is the uh, 3D profile, it was like a bump, but we can see no uh, bumps here for non-linear dynamics. Here we can see that the for linear down chirp, there is this uh, uh, energy absorption profile. So this here, this part here, it's actually like a constant, almost constant, right? So there is, a, there is this, uh, this, that inefficient energy absorption, which is right here, uh, energy emission right here, and there is absorption, which is not efficient. But <clears throat> what we see in nonlinear that that's, that's not actually like flat. That is actually like, uh, <clears throat> that's actually changing. So we can see right from here that it's actually, the nonlinear down chirp actually induces better uh, stimulated ab energy absorption and emission. Then what we have also found that nonlinear microwave can uh, reverse magnetization faster in lower field. So, there we have put uh, in the x-axis we have put the microwave field that we have applied and on the y-axis we have we can see the switching time that it takes the uh, to reverse the magnetization and we can see that the magnetization for uh, the switching time for uh, non-linear down chirp is actually lower for lower fields okay but uh, the switching time for linear down chirp actually starts to increase, which is uh, more than one nanosecond. But uh, for nonlinear downshift, th that is still uh, below 
uh, one nanosecond. Okay, so then we have uh, applied shape anisotropy to uh, uh, along with nonlinear down curve. So what we have found that shape anisotropy actually assists uh, faster reversal. And here we can see that the magnetization for the red one is for, uh, for the first one. So we have, what we, had, what we did that we kept the height of the, uh, our domain constant and we have increased along the X axis and Y axis. So what we have here is that the height of the uh, magnet, uh, magnetic particle was eight nanometer and we have increased along the X axis and the uh, Y axis. So for 10 by 10 nanometer square, the surface area, we can see this one, but what it happens that uh, as we increase the J anisotropy, the switching time starts to uh, increase. But after some increase of uh, the uh, surface, we can see that there is no bump actually for this one, which is for uh, 22 times 22 nanometer square surface. So uh, for this blue one, we can see there is no bump. Okay, so what is actually happening here? So we can see the energy profile. So what is what is it like that we can think of it? Uh, uh, we can think of it as like a, a potential well. So when it is uh, along the uh, uh, up direction, let's say, so there is it is actually stable here. So we are applying a, a, a field. So the field is, uh, the field is inducing uh, actually. Uh, the field is forcing the magnetization to reverse itself but there is a field that is forcing uh, the magnetization to stay along that one so there we can see that actually we have to cross that barrier that barrier to go to the other uh, lower uh, energy point okay so uh, so what is happening there that as we are increasing the shape and isotropy the uh, potential oil is going uh, up like this one so the uh, lowest energy actually going up like this one. So it, this is for eight by eight, this is for 12, and this is for 16. So as we are increasing the shape and isotropy, the potential well is going up. So now we can think of like the, so, okay, so if we increase it more, what will happen that we can see like this, uh, uh, the profile will be like this one. So what, what will happen that we, if we have a hill and we, we put a marble there, it will just try to go onto the bottom of that hill. So uh, what that is actually happening here that it actually, for, well, when uh, the magnetization is right here, we are actually, we actually need a little, uh, a very low frequency for this one. So this frequency actually just, uh, it actually just puts it right here and then it actually uh, goes itself. Up. It actually forces itself to go this one. So uh, there, that's why we actually see no bump here. So I hope uh, uh, that's understandable. Okay. So then what we have found that we found a frequency band. So what, what is happening here that uh, for, for uh, let's say for unixial shape, we, are, we found that frequency band. Okay. And for uh, five by five, so yeah, the red one is for uh, 10 times 10 nanometer square surface energy. That that is our frequency band. So for this uh, this this frequency range, we can see it actually have the consistent time. So so what what is this benefit of this frequency band? So what happens when in practical that when we try to uh, actually imply the, this idea in practically. So we have to manufacture a device that can create this frequency. It's actually hard for uh, to manufacture a device that actually uh, in, uh, produces a, a uh, uh, let's say a specific frequency. But it's, uh, but we, if we can manufacture a device that, is, uh, that, is, that uh, produces a frequency of, uh, in a certain range, which is easier for us. So it's, it, actually, it is actually helpful in our practical application that the frequency band, the frequency band can uh, induce magnetization reversal for a sa almost same consistent switching time. And then in conclusion, we can say that, uh, say that the nonlinear microwave field induce beta reversal 
And shape anisotropy allows us low energy re reversal because uh, the free shape anisotropy actually uh, acting uh, against the anisotropy energy. And resonant, resonant frequencies are lowered. So uh, if the frequencies are lowered, we can apply it uh, in practice. And the frequency band actually helps our realistic applications. So uh, this work was uh, supported by the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Science and Technology. Thank you all. Uh, if you have any question, please ask me. Thank you, Sami, for this really great talk. Uh, we would initiate the Q&A session now. So if you guys have any question regarding this uh, talk, you can ask our speaker about those inquiries. So first of all, thank you. Thank you very much for the nice talk. Um, I have a question. It may sound silly, but I really want to know that. Uh, while you were you were uh, while you were demonstrating, um, uh, you squeezed that triaxial shape um, into a biaxial, and you decreased decreased uh, the height. So while you are doing that, the magnetization um, tilted, magnetization tilted. So my question is, uh, when you are uh, when you squeeze the shape. Um, the magnetization magnetization is supposed to squeeze along the z axis why it didn't uh, why it didn't um, squeeze uh, squeeze uh, and why it did tilt it okay uh, so so when we uh, when actually squeeze the shape uh, what happens that okay let's say uh, um, uh, okay so let's say we have a rubber okay so when we are actually squeezing the rubber that doesn't actually uh, destroy the rubber or let's say uh, it actually uh, destroys some masses of the um, rubber that that that's not what happens actually right so that is actually same for the magnetization like when we're decreasing the shape of the uh, mag uh, magnetic particle this is actually not this not, this is not destroying the magnetization of that particle so that is why the magnetization cannot be destroyed but it is actually tilting along the uh, tilting uh, from the z axis but what we are interested in that we actually use the m small m but uh, the saturation magnetization ms which is uh, which stays same because it's, uh, the uh, the t uh, the pressure or let's say the shape deformation it, it doesn't actually destroy the magnetization but what we are interested in that we actually use normalized magnetization which is the small m so we actually uh, always uh, divide the magnetization by the that saturation magnetization so when it's uh, along that when the magnetization is all uh, the total magnetization is along that z, z axis when we divide that magnetization by ms it is actually one and when it's along the other side other uh, in the other direction that's actually minus one so we are actually interested in the mz so we are actually okay. So it, it doesn't actually matter because we are uh, so here we can uh, we are actually focusing on the z axis. So you can if we, you can work on uh, x axis. So it it's actually uh, depend. It is actually depending on the reference frame. But actually the magnetization doesn't dis get destroyed. So that is why it is actually get uh, it actually gets tilted. So I hope that answer is your your question. Yes, yes. I, I get. I just want to thank you for your very nice presentation and the animation for presenting the London Lipschitz and Gilbert equation and the ship anisotropy, which helps the magnetization dynamics. Uh, uh, actually, I'm not clear about your last slide, the frequency band. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, I'm very happy with seeing this presentation because it, I think it, this idea is very much interesting to me. Because, but in this slide, I'm not sure but which frequency band you are choosing for uh, your switching time. That means which one is more appropriate? Uh, sir, actually, we can. Uh, so, what it's actually a theoretical study. So, we actually used, uh, uh, we studied the frequencies for uh, different shapes. And uh, so we have found that for two, uh, uh, 22 by uh, 22 times 22 uh, nano, uh, nanometer square shape or surface, we get that frequency range. But oh, right. let's let let's go back to that uh, slide. So 
here we can see actually that uh, the the magnetization magnetization actually uh, uh, here right so uh, so that's not actually helpful in our practical uh, uh, application because if we uh, uh, because what we see here that the uh, potential is actually uh, small so uh, so wh what does it mean that if we uh, let's say there is uh, some other field that is acting on the uh, particle let's say heat or some other field then it will be like that the uh, the magnetization can be reversed from that field so we are not actually writing it the any other field can move the particle from that position or reverse itself reverse the magnetization so it it actually it's not thermally stable but we studied the shape for uh, we actually studied this uh, theoretically okay thank you thank you very much for your excellent presentation you actually make the many things of the llg equation uh, that is actually a little difficult to uh, understand and uh, uh, an intuition and i found that you actually uh, understand it and it has a uh, you have a great intuition and that reflect in your um, animation i give you a big hand for your great presentation yes and then now i want to uh, give a little uh, correction here there is a one student he uh, asks you the question about the high and the shape i mean the uh, keeping the thickness fixed when we increase the uh, cross sectional area in that case the magnetization tilt uh, around the z axis actually uh, the here actually the magnetization is reduced or reduced or you also uh, can it uh, the destroy it's also fine no problem because the magnetization along the z axis reduce why it is the uh, normalized value is 1 when it's little tilt it is the less than 1 when it's in a plane in the plane it's the magnetization along the z axis is 0 and then gradually when it reverses then reappear in the other direction in other stable direction so it's fine that the magnetization is reduced or reduction or destroyed. It's, it's also fine, no problem. Actually, your, your presentation is very good. I think I have no, um, no question actually. It's fine, no problem. So thank you for your good presentation. Uh, many, many thanks. You actually, you did a good presentation and actually your animation uh, was very effective for understanding and I have no question because you present your all uh, presentation very well. And, uh, and maybe hopefully I will try to participate of your every presentation.